experience much larger than perhaps we usually have perspective about. So I'm thankful for that as we think about taking a look at this whole idea of being neighbor. So fasten your seatbelts. Are you ready? As I dug into scripture this week and uh, we're ready to go, what's at the center of a fulfilled life? Begin with a question. Meaning and purpose, how does it all fit together? Lots of people ask that question in a variety of ways. Maybe not quite in those words, but really similar. There was a certain lawyer who came up to Jesus with a question. I'm not totally sure what was going on in his heart and his mind. We kind of make assumptions, but here we are. The, uh, just the lawyer then stood up to test Jesus, saying, Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answers the question with a question, as he sometimes did. An appropriate question for a lawyer, you might think. Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read here? And he answered, you shall love the Lord, with all your, God, Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with your mind. And your neighbor is yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. Basically, Jesus is pointing to this individual, to the question that started our journey, kind of what is at the center of life, as a fulfilled life. Love of God, love of neighbor. We got it. But where did this teaching come from? Is it something new with Jesus? Actually, these words uh, came from two very important teachings from the Jewish law and the Pentateuch the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Got it. The first teaching is from Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9, and starts with what is called the Shema. Have you ever heard of the Shema? It is, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're away. When you lie down, when you rise, bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead. And write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. This teaching about loving God is so important that all faithful people were taught to pray with this prayer on their lips in the morning and the evening of every single day. Flactories. Have you ever heard of flactory? You maybe have seen pictures of leather straps with a, like a box and one on the forehead. Uh, and also perhaps you've seen some on a door post, perhaps. I grew up in a, in a Catholic Jewish neighborhood in St. Paul, Minnesota. It's kind of an interesting experience. But I remember seeing the kind of the very special boxes. I didn't know anything about Hebrew in those days. This scripture was on the doorpost of families' homes. So important to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This is focused. Love of God is central to the fulfilled life. But what about love of neighbor? Where does that come from? Well, Leviticus 19.18 from the law ties the love of God with the love of neighbor. You shall not take vengeance or bear grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Remember, these come together. It seems clear, but wait a minute. Is this view of neighbor restrictive or inclusive? He talks about your people could make a case. Well, it's just about my people. Frankly, it's much easier to love my neighbor as myself if I actually like my neighbor. Agree? Yeah. Yes, I think so. And or if my neighbor is like me in perspective and background. True. But what if my neighbor is different from me? There's the rub. So the lawyer wanting to justify himself asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? You think he's trying to narrow the scope a little bit here? <laughs> Perhaps. 
ah, who is my neighbor? I can sense the tension and the struggle of this lawyer. The deeper he digs into scripture, the more it seems to be challenging his preconceived notions. Do you mean that anyone could be my neighbor? Hmm, where does this perspective come from? Surprise! <laughs> God's law implies that the definition of a neighbor centers on a person's need rather than the background or proximity, how close they are. What would it mean to say that my neighbor is primarily someone who is in need? Ooh, wait a minute. If we continue reading in Leviticus 19, verses 34, 30, 33, 34, 37, the word of God is a bit startling when we grapple with what it means to love our neighbor as ourself. Grip this one. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. <clears throat> Have you caught your breath yet? You shall love the alien as yourself, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Gulp. Remember that you were once aliens rescued by God out of thanks for the rescue of God of your people. You have a different perspective on others. Treat others the way that God treated you. You shall keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and observe them. I am the Lord. You see why I was struggling this week? Perhaps a lawyer didn't do all of the needed research for this case about the law or about Jesus. You wonder? He should have kept reading further in the law in the book of Leviticus. I find these words challenging. Any of you find these words challenging? Challenging my restrictive slant to the question, who is my neighbor? Is Jesus being radical or is he just being true to God's word? Jesus had a simple but powerful way of responding to the tough question, who is my neighbor? He told a story, a parable. We know the story. Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jericho, or from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Which of these three as we move on, do you think was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? Who would come to the aid of the unfortunate victim? Who would love this neighbor, Jesus asked. The lawyer responded with his judgment about these neighbors. He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. We've heard the story before. <clears throat> now, how would this encounter with Jesus, do you think, change the lawyer's life? Perhaps. <clears throat> Perhaps this lawyer could tap into some creativity, put up some signs in this dangerous road from Jerusalem to Jericho where terrible things happen to people, and you could say, Hurt Colbert or Ron Bell. Now, Ron Bell has been around for a long time. We left Albuquerque in 1998, and he was looking a little old in those days, but <laughs> I, I don't know what, he, he takes vitamin pills or something, I don't know. He seems to be getting younger looking. Maybe he's old enough that he used to have a sign up on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Is that what Jesus is talking about? How we relate to our neighbors? Where do you find yourself on this road of loving your neighbor as yourself? That's the question, isn't it? At different times in my life, I found myself in different roles and different parts of the story. On Friday night, Sherry and I and our son-in-law, Kevin, and our granddaughters, Emma and Joanna, temporarily found ourselves in the role of innkeeper. Have you ever related to this story in the from the role of the innkeeper? Uh, we just kind of forget about the innkeeper. And uh, on Friday, we volunteered for Family Promise at Cross of Hope. You've heard of Family Promise before? 
It's where families who are in between housing and they're housing fragile and they're look they're getting to the place where they can actually move into a home and, or an apartment. Family Promise is an effort to provide a place of safety and healing for families in transition. Now we ate together, we talked together, and we played together with these four families, and they live in a church for two weeks, basically. And it may be four families, it might be five, it might be less, and there's churches actually all over Albuquerque in this area that are doing this. And it's a volunteer ministry. You perhaps have not heard that Family Promise has a 90% success rate for getting families into their own housing within two years of participating in Family Promise. Have you heard that before? That, I think, is pretty incredible. A 90% rate of these fragile families, and this is a safe place because a church building is a safe place, and all these volunteers come in, and they help out, and they care for these folks, and they can go, and they can come, they can come back. 90% success rate for these families who've been a part of Family Promise, they get into safely into a, a home themselves. They're not on the street. They're not in danger. They're not in the, you know, in the, in the temporary housing. This is in, pretty incredible, actually. But it's a two-week commitment for churches with volunteers to do that. Who is my neighbor? I mean, that's the question, isn't it? We'll come back to this basic question. A hated Samaritan, an outsider, reminds me that my vision is sometimes too restrictive. I have many more neighbors to meet and to reach. Now, through the varied ministries of Community of Joy, you've also been responding to this question of who is my neighbor. I celebrate these connections to our neighbors, thanks to Erlene, who helped me to put together some pictures of a collage of the kind of things that you are doing, you're a part of, to make connections with our neighbors. Just, just a sample, Operation Warm Welcome, Storehouse West, Collections for Homeless, and Pop Tabs for Ronald McDonald House. How many of you recognize these ministries? How many of you have been involved and engaged with these ministries? If you have not been yet, look at somebody who raised their hand. These are ways that we're lifting our eyes and broadening our perspective of who is our neighbor. But that's not it, there are more. Meals for Immigrants and Asylees, Kalinas Del Norte Elementary School, Vitamins for Uganda, Compassion Beyond Borders. How many of you have heard about or been involved with these ministries of reaching our neighbor? If you've not been a part of these ministries before, look at someone who's raised their hand. Again, raising our sight of who is our neighbor, how do we connect with others? Of course, this is just a fraction of the ministries that we share together and remind us of how our lives and perspectives are changed when our eyes are opened up by the gift of someone who we have not even met yet. I know I have preconceived notions about all sorts of people that I don't know, correct? It's just kind of a matter of self-protection, and I'm, I'm kind of a quiet person. I have preconceived notions about folks that I have not met yet. What does it take to get a different view? Of course, it's by being face-to-face -face with people, right? It's about getting to know someone by name. It's about seeing our neighbors as someone who is a child of God, a person who is a part of our family and our experiences. Of course, this is just a fraction of the ministries that remind us of how our lives and perspectives are changed in love for our neighbors. You know, I've been a pastor for 43 years. I've heard the Good Samaritan text before a few times. And you have as well. But this week also was different because we were part of Family Promise on Friday. And in the midst of the digging in and, and listening and praying and being involved in an experience, my eyes too were freshly opened to see people that I had never met before 
to hear a part of their stories and to have a sense that we are part of a community. You know, do you get discouraged once in a while with the news and all of the junk going on and, and we never hear and we never experience a one-on-one, -on -one, person to person, the people of God who are a part of this loving community that we know is, is just quietly working there. It just lifts your spirits, doesn't it? to have that sense that there's more going on here by the work of God's Spirit in the midst of all of the craziness and all of the stuff that goes on and the signs that we see on the highways or whatever we're seeing. There's gifts of God shared simply, personally, face-to-face -face in the midst of community and family. You know, this simple but difficult parable of the Good Samaritan destroys our simple answers and stretches us beyond ourselves to find fulfillment in life. Very different from that perspective of the world and the noise that just kind of goes in our life all the time. Loving God and loving our neighbor goes beyond our expectations. At the center of the fulfilled life, love of God, love of neighbor, as one who shows mercy, as one who shows mercy. A new definition of neighbor. Go and do likewise. Amen? Amen. Amen.